Hey guys, and welcome back to Caribbean Toots. We are not doing Section A syllabus today. We are looking at moles and moles concepts. A lot of you guys sent questions to me for me to cover in this video. I will also be using questions from your textbook. So before we begin, the first thing that we want to do is give a definition of what a mole is. So a mole is the amount of a substance that contains 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now when we say particles, we can refer to atoms, molecules, ions, and when we say amount, we can refer to mass, or if it's a gas, it would be volume. So the first thing that we want to calculate is molar mass. So we're going to look at calculating the molar mass of H2O, or water. So the formula for water is H2O. The first thing that you want to do is write down the hydrogen and the mass of hydrogen, which is one gram. Then you're going to multiply it by the number of times that hydrogen appears in the chemical formula, which is two. So you write down two. The next thing you're going to do is write the mass of the next element, which is oxygen. And the mass of that is 16 grams and you're going to multiply it by the number of times it appears in the chemical formula, which is one. After calculating this, you're going to add both of them together and you should get 18 grams. Two grams of hydrogen plus 16 of oxygen. So that's 18 grams per mole. And we say per mole because it is 18 grams present in one mole of water. And the symbol for molar mass is capital M. So we just calculated the molar mass of water, which is 18 grams per mole. So what if they give us the mass of water and ask us to calculate the number of moles in that mass of water? We can use a given chemical formula or we can just use cross multiplication. So if they gave us 27 grams, say, 27 grams is equal to X number of moles, because that's the unknown. Then we use the molar mass that we know. So we say 18 grams is equal to one mole of water. We just calculated that here, 18 grams per mole. 18 grams is equal to one mole of water. And they're asking us, how many moles is 27 grams equal to? So we'll just do a cross multiplication. So we have 18 grams multiplied by X number of moles is equal to 27 grams multiplied by one mole. So we're trying to get X on one side of the equation by itself. So we'll divide this side by 18 grams and this side by 18 grams. So 18 divided by 18 grams cancels, leaving us with X mole on this side of the equation, and 27 grams divided by 18 grams equals 1.5, and the grams will cancel each other, so we're left with mole. 1.5 mole. So now we know that there is 1.5 mole of water in 27 grams of water. Okay, so the next thing that we want to calculate is the number of moles if they give us the number of particles. So if they say how many moles is in 1.8 times 10 to the 23rd particles of nitrogen, how do we calculate this? So they're asking us how many moles is in 1.8 times 10 to the 23rd particles of nitrogen. So we know that one mole of anything has 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So we can do cross multiplication here again. So we'd say that one mole is equal to 
6.0 times 10 to the 23rd particles and x, which is x number of moles, is equal to the value that they gave us, 1.8 times 10 to the 23rd. And then we cross multiply. So we have 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd being multiplied by x. And one mole being multiplied by 1.8 times 10 to the 23rd. So again, we're trying to get x by itself. So we'll divide this side by 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd and this side by 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd. This side cancels, this side cancels. And if we divide 1.8 times 10 to the 23rd by 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd, we should get 0.3 moles of nitrogen. Remember to put the gas or the element that they gave you beside your answer. They gave you number of particles of nitrogen, so put back moles of nitrogen. Now we're going to look at a question where they give us the number of particles and ask us to calculate the mass of the substance that is in that number of particles. For example, we're going to calculate the mass of 2.4 times 10 to the 22 calcium nitrate formula units. Now formula units are the same thing as particles, so you could say 2.4 times 10 to the 22 particles of calcium nitrate. So we're calculating the mass of 2.4 times 10 to the 22 formula units of calcium nitrate. Now the first thing that you want to do is calculate the number of moles present in 2.4 times 10 to the 22 particles of calcium nitrate. So we did cross multiplication over here, but a simpler way is to divide the given number which over here you saw that the given number was 1.8 by the number in one mole. So that's the easy way to do it. So the given number here is 22.4 times 10 to the 22 particles. So we say moles, number of moles equals 2.4 times 10 to the 22 divided by the number of particles in one mole, which is 6.0 times 10 to the 23. Now, when you divide this, you should get 0.04 moles of calcium nitrate. In 2.4 times 10 to the 22 particles of calcium nitrate is 0.04. So now we know how many moles we have, and if we want to calculate the mass, we just have to find the mass that's present in 0.04 mole. So first we need to calculate the molar mass of calcium nitrate. Again, write down the first element and the number of times it appears, which is once. Multiply it by the mass, which is 40, that's for calcium. Use the next element, nitrogen. It occurs twice in the chemical formula, calcium nitrate. Write down the mass, which is 14. Next element, oxygen, occurs six times in this chemical formula, three times in nitrate and twice in calcium nitrate. Three times two, six. Multiply it by its mass, which is 16, and you should get 164 grams per mole. So now we can calculate the number of moles we have in 0.04 moles because we know the mass that's present in one mole of calcium nitrate. An easier way to calculate the mass that you have, if you have molar mass and the number of moles, 
is to multiply the molar mass by the number of moles that you have. I did cross multiplication on previous one, but I'm just showing you a simpler way to calculate it here. So we would say mass equals 164 grams per mole multiplied by 0.04 moles. And you should get 6.56 grams of calcium nitrates. Okay, so the next section that we want to look at is moles and volume of gases. Now before we look at that, let's just outline what I've got. Equal volumes of all gases under the same temperature and pressure and conditions will have the same number of molecules. So the first question we're going to look at is how many moles are present if we have 3.3 dm cube of carbon dioxide at standard temperature and pressure. So we know that at standard temperature and pressure, which is this one, we have one mole present in 22.4 dm cube. So x number of moles will be present in 3.36 dm cube of carbon dioxide. So we cross multiply and we say 22.4 dm cube times x is equal to 3.36 dm cube times 1 mole. We're trying to get the x by itself, so we divide both sides by 22.4 dm cube. Three point three six divided by twenty two point four should give us zero point one five, and we have moles here, so that would be zero point one five mole carbon dioxide. So now we know that at standard temperature and pressure, there is zero point one five mole of carbon dioxide present in three point three six dm cube. So a volume of three point three six dm cube would have 0.15 moles of carbon dioxide. We could also use RTP. If they gave you RTP, you would just substitute 22.4 dm cube with 24 dm cube, and you can work that out. The next question that we're going to look at is, how many sulfur trioxide molecules are present in 720 cm cube of sulfur trioxide gas? So we have 720 cm cube of sulfur trioxide gas. And we're trying to help calculate the number of molecules present in 720 cm cube. And this is at RTP. Now, at room temperature and pressure, we remember that one mole is equal to 24 dm cube. Now the easy way to do it is to convert is to convert this dm cube into cm cube which will be equal to 24000 cm cube. So to convert dm cube to cm cube you multiply it by 1000. So we know that one mole of sulfur trioxide gas at room temperature and pressure will have a volume of 24,000 cm3. So we say that X number of moles of sulfur trioxide gas will have 720 cm3. So we cross multiply to find X. X times 24,000 cm cube and 1 mole times 720 cm cube. We're trying to get X by itself, so divide this side by 24,000 cm cube and this side by 24,000 cm cube. This cm cube cancels. 
720 divided by 24,000 should give you 0 0.03. And this is moles. This is x. So now we just calculated the number of moles that's present in 720 cm cube of sulfur trioxide. And they asked us to calculate the number of particles present. And you know if we have the number of moles, we can calculate the number of particles. One mole equals 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So how much does 0 0.03 mole equal? So an easy way to do this is multiply the moles that you calculated here by the number of particles in one mole, which is 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd. So we have 0 0.03 mole times 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd. And this is particles per mole, you could say. And you would get 1.8 times 10 to the 22nd particles. Okay, so the last section that we're going to do is moles and chemical formulae. Really, it should be volume of gas and chemical formulae. Um, I'm going to look at a question that someone sent me. It says, calculate the volume of hydrogen produced at room temperature and pressure from 60 grams of aluminum in this reaction. So I'm going to write the reaction here. Okay, so in this reaction, we have two moles of aluminum reacting with six moles of sodium hydroxide to produce two moles of sodium aluminate and three moles of hydrogen. So what they're asking us to do is to calculate the volume of hydrogen that is produced if we have 60 grams of aluminum reacting with the sodium hydroxide. And I'm assuming that the sodium hydroxide is in excess, so it won't limit the reaction. So before we do anything else, let's calculate the number of moles that 60 grams of aluminum is equal to. So we know one mole of aluminum is equal to 27 grams. So x mole is equal to 60 grams. And you should get something like 2.2 mole. So we hear in the question that they're asking us, 60 grams of aluminum would be equal to 2.2 moles of aluminum. So now we're going to look at some mole ratio. We're going to look at aluminum and hydrogen, which are the compounds we're focusing on in this reaction. In this, we have two moles of aluminum producing three moles of hydrogen, but they're asking us how many moles of hydrogen will be produced from 60 grams of aluminum? We calculated how many moles 60 grams of aluminum is, which is 2.2. So we have 2.2 formed as x. will form x amounts of hydrogen. And if you do your cross multiplication right, you should get x to equal 3.3 moles of hydrogen. So now we know how many moles of hydrogen we have or how many moles of hydrogen is produced from the reaction with 60 grams of aluminum. Now the next thing that we want to do is calculate the volume that this 3.3 moles of hydrogen will take up. So they gave us at RTP, room temperature and pressure, room temperature and pressure, which is equal to 24 dm cubed. So we say one mole of hydrogen will take up the volume of 24 dm cube at RTP and 3.3 moles of hydrogen will take up x. One mole of hydrogen times x will give us 3.3 moles of hydrogen times 24 dm cube. Divide both sides by one mole to leave x alone on that side of the equation. And you should get and you should get 
two dm cube of hydrogen gas. So if we use 60 grams of aluminum in the reaction with sodium hydroxide, you would get 79.2 dm cubes of hydrogen gas. Okay guys, so that ends this video. These are the questions I could cover. If you'd like me to go part two, just let me know. And leave a comment if you have questions or videos that you'd like me to cover, as well as subscribe to this YouTube channel and share these videos. Okay, bye.